Hello, my name is Nathan Zimmerman, and I am a junior in electrical engineering at NDSU. This is uh, my, my second project, which was a solder reflow oven. Now you might be asking yourself, well, what is a solder reflow oven and what is it used for? Well, it is used for surface mount components. Now in my previous project, I showed you this laser-based security system, and as you can see, it has these components that go completely through to the bottom side of the board. These are called through-hole components, believe it or not. Now in the industry, these are way too uh, big and bulky, and uh, uh, board space is uh, real estate and money. You can't have a, uh, your components taking up the vast majority of your board. So what we're going to do in this video is uh, a brief introduction to surface mount components. Now earlier I have a video of uh, this board being flowed in my oven and as you can see the surface mount components are much smaller however the unfortunate thing about surface mount components is they're incredibly painful to solder and so that is why I have created this makeshift reflow oven in which we can create nice um, surface mount component boards like this with relative ease so here's the control board for my oven and then here is a, a, a more uh, tricked out version of it with all the components soldered on so I what I got here is I got a nice display to display the oven temperature I got two status light LEDs two tactile push buttons I have a input right here for um, a uh, let's see a laptop charger I got a pot here to control the contrast of the LCD display I have two headers uh, for two inputs one is a thermal couple input and the other is a relay input and so that's how that works and then once you use your oven to flow your surface mount parts you later then go back and uh, hand solder the um, through hole parts so that's how that works and then here's the oven itself and when I got hooked up to the oven is a thermal couple that is in there in the oven it's kind of hard to see and then I also have a relay right here which is basically a switch in line with the heating elements of the oven and then what I have is I have the oven in this always on mode I don't know if you can read that but it says stay on so what happens is whenever I apply power to the oven the oven always turns on and what I can do with that is I can turn the oven on and off at will with that relay and with that I can control the temperature of the oven. So let's see how it works. Alright now our board is inside the oven and then on the pads on the board we have placed something called solder paste and then on top of the solder paste we have of course our components. Now what solder paste is, it's actually tiny uh, particles of solder that are suspended in flux. And then when it heats up to the point where the normal solder would melt, the uh, solder combines together and separates from the flux. And with that, we can uh, form a solid connection and once it cools down, it'll be just the same as a regular um, hand soldered connection. So that's how that works. And then in a second here, you should actually see the parts flow on the board. Hence our reflow oven. All right, we have now flowed our very first board. It's that easy. Now I'd like to talk to you about my control board. The reason you need, need a control board is to ensure that your oven does not get to a temperature hot enough to the point where it would damage the components. Now I called this a reflow oven. What that means <clears throat> for you over here to our computer is that the reflow oven follows this temperature curve that is ideal 
for surface mount components and the flowing of solder paste. So it's made of a couple steps. Initially right here we have this ramp step where we raise our temperature um, up to about say 160 degrees Celsius and at this point our board is uh, fairly hot but we don't risk damaging the components. And once we get to that temperature, we go into something called the, the soak state or the, the soaking zone. And we leave it at that temperature for an extended duration to make sure we heat up the entire board. We want to heat it up, but we also don't want to be at a temperature so hot that we risk damaging the components on the board. And then we have this next bump right here, which is our reflow zone. At this point, we go up um, from, say, 160 degrees Celsius to about 220 degrees Celsius. At this point, our components could be damaged if we kept them in there for an extended duration of time, which is why we have this small little ramp bump um, in which we increase the temperature to the point where solder will melt, but only for a short duration of time. And so that is what my control board simulates. It si simulates a, a, a commercial reflow oven. And by doing that, I can ensure minimal uh, risk to the components that I'm flowing. So again, here's the board itself. It is powered by a, um, a wall laptop supply. So I'm just gonna plug that in and hopefully the board will work. There you go, Zolus reflow oven. And then it says select profile, and it has LB to toggle or left button. So I'm gonna press the left button, and with it, I can uh, toggle through my various profiles. I have PB free um, reflow profile, which stands for lead free. Uh, that is a, a government requirement on consumer electronics uh, that the vast majority of them be lead free. So that is why I have that option built into my, um, my control board. And then I also have another option, which is uh, leaded solder or leaded solder paste. And in my case, I use what is uh, most practical and what is best, which is, of course, leaded solder paste. And uh, they, they reflow at a different temperature, and that's why you need the, uh, the multiple profiles. So it says RB to start oven, right button. I'm going to hit that right button, and then it says initializing. Now you see a red LED down there, and that's just informing me that my oven is currently um, on. Now I have a, a, just a green status light right there, and then I have the current temperature that my oven is at. All right, so you can see that the oven has heated up a little bit more, and that is basically how it works. The control board will ensure that the oven heats up or turns off as much as necessary to ensure that it follows that uh, reflow profile that I mentioned earlier. And then it'll try to follow those key points in the profile, such as the initial ramp stage, the stoke stage, and then the reflow stage. So that is the basics behind how my control board works. So I hope you've now seen just what a reflow oven is how you go about controlling the reflow oven, and finally, the application of a reflow oven. So as you can see, this is the board that we just flowed, and there's very little, if any, excess solder or flux, and there are absolutely no solder bridges, and it didn't take very long to create. So I would highly recommend this process for the creation of your uh, PCBs and prototypes. I would also highly recommend the MSP430 Launchpad. This is what I'm using to program my MSP430 uh, processor that I have on my board. And I just use some jumper cables from the Launchpad to the board to program that. And I'd also highly recommend for support regarding MSP430 processors, I would highly recommend 430.com. And I'd like to thank the people in the IRC there for giving me a little help in the creation of this project. So again, this is just what a reflow oven is.